Yes. I can't believe how lucky we are. An owl, an owl has just flown over and landed literally right in the tree above us. Hidden all around the world are places we've abandoned, but these ruins don't always lie empty. I'm zoologist Yusuf Rafiq, and with my wildlife filmmaker friend Dan O'Neill, I'm on a mission to see what moves in after we've gone. For this investigation, we're exploring the biggest abandoned coal mine site in the UK, Chatterley Whitfield. It looks very apocalyptic. Yeah, it wouldn't be out of place in a zombie apocalypse film, it would it? wouldn't at all. It feels like it would be very easy to die here. That thing is incredible though. Yeah. And that's the, that's the main head headgear that brought up all that coal. And over yeah. its lifetime, it brought up 24 million tonnes of coal. I can't even like fathom that working yeah. and this place being like full of people. More than 4,000 miners worked here every day by the 1920s in some of the deepest pits in the UK. Under our feet is the Hesketh shaft, which is eight times deeper than this chimney is tall. But it's been about 45 years since coal was mined here. And as people moved out, other things moved in. That's cool. Bird on top of that. Uh, you've got to do this. Is it a magpie? It's a piece of metal. Well, that's embarrassing for both of us. <laughs> I mean, these places are amazing for birds of prey because you see these like broken windows, mm -hmm. old bits of like iron, really tall structures, especially like the chimney, perfect vantage points for falcons, hawks, owls to sit. There's a bunch of crows up there already. I just hope we get to see them because the weather's not ideal, Yeah. which means this will be a bit of a treasure hunt. While I settle down with my camera, Yusef is off exploring. Oh wow, okay, so we've got an old mine cart here and this would have been used to transport uh, the coal and dirt around the mines. But over here, we've got what's known as a man rider. So this would have been used to transport the men underground along those tracks um, and it looks pretty cramped so you can just imagine what the conditions would have been like. But it's quite cool to see one because most of them were actually left underground because it just wasn't economically viable to bring them all back up. And these things um, would have been powered by a battery, but before that, uh, they would have used ponies to pull these uh, carts along. So th that's an incredible fact, to be honest, that they actually had ponies underground working. And they had special stables that they kept these ponies in. And sadly, they only actually used to bring them up once a year uh, for an annual holiday. Here we are, in the hide. But now we just play the waiting game. Because little owls are by far our smallest owl. And they only stand at 20 centimeters tall. But even being 20 centimeters tall, you wouldn't believe this, but apparently anecdotal evidence of people saying that they can catch rabbits. And that will be because they have incredibly strong tarsal bones. Their grip bones are really, really powerful for such a tiny little bird. I mean, one thing that we do have on our side is unlike many other species of owl, little owls do actually come out in the day. Come on, little owl. So up there, grown out of the side of the building, is a buddleia plant, also known as the butterfly bush. Um, gets the name because butterflies absolutely love it and I've actually spotted quite a few around the site. And during the summer, those, you can actually see a few of those purple flowers. Uh, during the summer, there'll be a lot more, and I imagine this place is absolutely teeming with butterflies. Um, you can also see in that third window there, there's a green chair, and that chair is where the operator would have sat, but that chair hasn't been moved since the 1970s when this place closed down. I'm actually really enjoying myself out here.
Look at that, we've got a sunflower growing out of the roof. Such a weird place to see a sunflower. This is what you have to expect when sitting in a hide and filming with a long lens. It can take a really long time. Wow, so this beautiful pink plant right here is called a Rose Bay Willow Herb. And these are actually really cool because they're one of the first plants to colonize a disturbed area. Uh, so in a place like this, a brownfield site. Their other name is the bomb weed. During the wars, during the blitz, when those bomb craters were created, it kind of scarred the landscape. But these guys being so effective at colonizing areas like that really took over. Um, and yeah, that's how they got the name bomb weed. roosting hole. These guys mate for life. So this is probably their spot, their dominion here. And they're very territorial so he's now just coming out to sit there and make sure that no one else comes along while they get ready to hunt for small invertebrates. But that is just awesome. I bet loads of people don't even know that we have little owls. They're so shy. And even though they're not a native species, they came to the UK a couple hundred years ago. I'm really chuffed that we get to have them now. So adorable. And he's going back in. Who would have thought in an abandoned coal mine we would have an animal? It's clear that the buildings of this industrial ghost town have become a safe space for wildlife. Out of 134 buildings, only 34 are still standing. Some of these are literally falling apart, but this huge workshop at the heart of the site managed to survive. And today, we're being given access to this off-limits space. Oh my God. Whoa. <laughs> this place is insane. Oh, look at this, Dan. Yeah, this is, this is definitely fox. Is that fox poo? Yeah. So you can see, you can see like the seeds from the flappers. Oh yeah. The shape of the poo. What a cool place to find fox. Oh, imagine camera trapping in here. I wonder how they get in. There must be some, Whoa. there's a hole there, but that's not big enough. This looks like a Call of Duty map. Check this out. This is properly decomposing. What would this have been? And this would have been the workbench. Oh, they've still got the vice. Yeah. Look at this. It's squeaky now, but it works. Got the saw. This is an antique. Look how the spider webs have just completely overtaken it as well. Put your hand under it. Let's see if it works. I'm not putting my hand under there. No? That is a health and safety hazard. Oh, Ooh, look that? at this, Dan. <laughs> You're not going to like this. You're not going to like this at all. What is it? Check this out. Got a spider, a huge spider. This is a house spider. <laughs> and it explains what? all the webs around here. Hello, Mr. Spider. Oh, God. Look at those fangs. Stop, don't say that. Go on. So, house spiders, right, part of the funnel web family, which explains why we're seeing all these funnels in the spider oh, webs. made by that guy. So, is it? And what, and they just sort of wait on one side for things to walk across wait it? On it? Yeah, and I get, I mean, in here, I guess you'll get a lot of flies, a lot of moths. Great ideal habitat. If you're going to hold it, nope. come come here. No, thank you. Come here. Oh, check this machine out, mate. Brilliant. Don't change the subject. It's real. Come here. Real nice machine over here. It's just chilling now. It's, it's got really hairy feet. Those aren't its fangs, are they? Those are like pedi palps. No, they're the pedi palps. Yeah, yeah, okay, it has got, uh, it's because got if those were the fangs, it wouldn't be coming anywhere near me. Alright. Now look at it. It knows. It knows. It knows. Look, it knows. It knows. It's all right with you, but it knows. Them. Hold it, there we go. So those petty palps, those just like help it eat, right? Yeah, yeah. There we go. Oh, I can see the fangs and I don't like it. They don't jump though, do they? No. That is, I mean, it is beautiful. Okay, we can take him off now. 
There we go. Right back to your horrible little home where you kill things. There you go. Oh, there you go, mate. It's your web. That's your home. Go kill something. It's quite friendly, really. Let's see if we can find a bigger one. Yeah, now. let's get the hell out of this room. I like that. Hey, look at this. Do you know what this is? Oh, that's one of the oxygen things. Yeah. Yeah. So they would have, it would have had another section on top yeah, of here. Yeah. And these, every miner would have one of these. Mm -hmm. And there'd be a cap here. And if something went wrong in the mine, he'd put his mouth against it. And it would give him 30 minutes of oxygen to try and find his way out. The worst part was, though, that because the chemical reaction that made the oxygen was so hot, when they needed to use it for the half an hour, it would burn their tin and give them horrible blisters. That's so scary. Imagine being in that situation. I know. Oh, God. Terrifying. 30 minutes of oxygen. Makes your skin crawl, doesn't yeah. it? Wherever we look, there are clues about the past. But the time capsule that is now Chatley Whitfield is actually much bigger than it seems from the inside. The 20 hectares surrounding it all used to be part of the colliery. There was a railway here, and this hill was a slag heap made up of all the waste from the coal mine. It was once said to be the tallest man-made structure in Europe. It's now been rewilded, and this long grass here makes for a perfect hunting ground. We just saw a kestrel fly over and land on this little building up here. And it looks like it's probably a male because it's got a silvery head. Habitat here is really good for these guys because as a brownfield site, this has pretty poor nutrient soils, which is really good for grasses because that poor nutrients means that it's hard for um, dominant species to take hold. And those diverse grasslands attract diverse insects and invertebrates, which in turn attracts small mammals as well. And this guy is probably hovering around, searching for those during the day, and now he's just come in to roost. I used to be a falconer, and uh, the reason I became one is because when I was a real young kid, I read a book about a boy who finds a kestrel in an old abandoned building, and it kind of set me on the course of becoming a falconer. So it's nice to see one here, in an abandoned building, just like that. There's a branch there. Right. It's steak out time, and we're looking for badgers, and I've really got my fingers crossed that we're going to see one. I mean, they do come out at night because that's their, uh, this is the time when they come out to forage and find food. Um, so badgers will eat things like worms. I mean, they eat a lot of worms. They can eat hundreds in a night. Uh, small mammals, fruit, vegetation. They're really not fussy. I really want to see something cool so I can rub it in Dan's face. because He's probably watching barn owls right now as we speak. Where are you, little owl? Just scanning these broken windows, looking for our beautiful barn owl friend. He's not come out yet, but apparently this is around about the time he likes to come out. I have always loved owls because of their fantastic hearing and the way that when they fly, it's completely silent, so they cause no disturbance and make no sound to give them the best chance of catching prey. And that's actually because of an incredible adaptation on their feathers. Their feathers curl in at the edges, which creates a kind of serrated wind tunnel that stops the wind from making that really loud sound. But it has a, a problem as well, which is another reason why they love places like this. Because barn owls and all owls that have the same curled in feather structure get really, really wet when it rains and get really water clogged. So they love buildings where they get complete and total protection from the rain. So places like this, these old abandoned buildings are actually completely perfect habitat for owls. You'd never think it, it was amazing. I just saw a flash of white in there. Keep our eyes peeled. I think you're in there somewhere, aren't you, Mr. Owl? Where are you? An owl has just flown over and landed, literally, right in the tree above us. You can make out his warm body. So this is, this is a tawny owl. Oh my god, there's another one over there. Um, so this is a tawny owl and we can tell it's a male from that, the call it's making. I can't believe it. He is so close.
can still hear the male and female calling to each other. So that much raspier um, male call that we could hear behind could possibly be a juvenile. Um, it takes them a little while to get that vocal call, vocal call um, nailed down and sorted properly. So something else just flew in. I think we've got two in the tree now. We are surrounded by tawny houses. This is absolutely incredible. But what is interesting is that it could be the juvenile of these adults uh, because this is around about the time of year where they will start pushing them out. Uh, because these are territorial birds, they will be calling on this to uh, communicate, so to pair up, but also to, to tell each other that this is my territory. But I really love how you can so easily hear the difference between that female and that male. Perfect timing. Right. I think they've just left now uh, and it's probably time for us to do so too. Time is getting on a little bit. Um, unfortunately we didn't see any badgers, it was a bit of a long shot anyway, but I think I think it's hard to argue that we didn't have an absolutely amazing time. I don't think I've ever been this close to a group of wild tawny owls. It was literally just sat in that tree right above us. Got him just about to give up we're literally about to leave yes. oh God, it's so amazing so it's like when it turns to one side it's kind of ghostly and you can barely see it and then it twists its head and looks right at us and those giant great big eye like heart-shaped face and those black eyes because it's so ghostly and white and it has those kind of really deep set dark forward-facing eyes it's been known to be called the ghost owl or even the death owl. I can't believe how lucky we are. God, we've been waiting here for hours. We came up here, saw our little kestrel friend, hoping to see this guy, nothing. And then there was a flash, just a kind of like the wings had obviously come up as he was going into this building and then disappeared and we sat here for hours waiting for this moment. But obviously as we're getting a bit tired now, it's getting a little bit dark. This one's just waking up. I was like, oh wow, just flown off. Females are slightly larger. Wow, look at that flying around. Where have you gone? Oh my god, you're coming back, aren't you? You're coming back. Really, really cool. And the shape of that face is really helpful for angling the sound. Ah, oh, it's just flown down again. Angling the sound. In all into the direction of the owl's face and going into those asymmetrically, asymmetrically organised ears so it can perfectly pinpoint where that prey item is and then take it with that silent flight caused by those serrated turned in feathers at the side. Terrifying if you're that big, but beautiful for us. After being so lucky with all these owls, I can't wait to see what our camera traps have picked up. Feeling lucky? I am actually. I feel like we've had a fair bit of success in the day, so I don't see quite anything at night. So this is the badger set. Okay. And here we go with the bar. Oh, it's rabbit. Rabbit. Lovely eye shine on that though. Yes, yeah, so you can see that's the badger set. Oh, oh my god, look at the mouse! Oh, god. <laughs> oh, there's a rabbit again. Where are these traps? These traps are down by the um, Hesketh mine shaft. Oh. Oh, there's loads of rabbits. Oh, he's seen something. It's cute, he's seen something. Oh my, god. oh my god. Look it's a fox. That. It's a fox. Yes. <laughs> That's probably what <laughs> he was scared of. Oh, he's got something. Oh What's he god. got? What have you got? Let's go back. Is it a rabbit? I think, I think it might be a rabbit. It might be a rabbit, yeah. Oh, oh. oh, in the day. Look, it's so weird seeing yeah. all the derelict buildings and. Oh, oh. lovely. Is he having a pee? Just a little pee. There you go, mate. Marking your territory. <gasps> badger! Oh, yes. You got a badger? Yes. Oh my yes. god. Wow. I can't believe there are badgers in there as well. That, that was good. This place is like thriving. There's so much in here. How does is that, that inside a building, that one? Yeah, yeah. Was it inside here? It looked like it was in here. Was that in this building? I can't. It is. It's right there. Is it? It's right there. I thought I recognised that. That is right there. It's incredible. So oh my god, thing. look. That's the fence. Yeah. See? 
Oh wow. my God. So he's running around in here. That's Do you think he's cool. maybe to blame for some of these feathers? I can't believe there's foxes running around yeah. inside. And badgers, I'm glad we, we, got, we got footage of badgers. We might not have caught it ourselves, we've got footage, so. Nice one. Oh, mate, yeah. what a good end to this place. It has been, it's been great. You'd never expect it, would you? Just no. how much can be here. No. And you'd never realise that a place like this is actually way more important than people probably even realise. I mean, you'd never think that an abandoned old building could have so much wildlife inside. And it's, but it's completely run down and it feels like a complete like, lost yeah. place. Yeah. But it's amazing to think just how important these places are for wildlife. People probably have no idea that this could harbour so many species. It's brilliant to see how nature has kind of healed this place.